Total War Warhammer 3 Patch 2.0 has arrived. In addition to bringing you the Champions of Chaos DLC, the Blood Pack DLC, and the first beta access to Immortal Empires DLC, we're updating the core game to align each of the releases. These additions will be free for all players. The Warriors of Chaos will be receiving a campaign rework thanks to our four new Legendary Lords, with new faction mechanics including Chaos Gifts provide god-given boosts for your faction, a vassal-based settlement structure with dark fortresses and altars to act as the bloodline for your armies, warband recruitment to hire mercenaries from around the world, warband upgrades to level up your units with their experience in the battlefield, and Path to Glory where dedicated characters will be able to gather boons and advance their power with a mark of chaos. Is with us. Visual changes have been made, including hand-drawn occupation images for all factions, and an improved war coordination interface with quick access to all your allies and vassals. We also have a visual update for the Chaos Knights of Siege and the Doom Knights of Siege, visual updates for Lore of Death and Lore of Metal, and a size increase for the Chaos War Steeds, as well as new combat animations for Archaeon the Everchosen. We've also tweaked the UI of the game to add more variety to the colour palette. On the Realm of Chaos map, four new provinces have been added. The Northern Wastelands, Albion, Marches of Corun, and Middle Mountains. The four Champions of Chaos will be present on the map, but will not participate in the race for Ursa, pursuing their own agendas. Several new factions now present on the map as AI, including the Marches of Corun, led by Luren Leonkur's vassal, Earl Adabert, and Wintertooth, led by Throg, the Troll King. Wei Jin is now a 10-slot settlement for Cathay, and with the arrival of Azazel, Kurgan Warband's spawn rates have been further reduced north of the Bastion, and they can no longer declare war on most Chaos-aligned factions. Automatic declaration of war against non-demon factions has been removed from Khorne, Siege, Demons of Chaos and Nurgle. Allies can now be given an Occupy request in addition to attack and defend, which will encourage them to actively claim the settlement, including ruined settlements. Confederation has now been rebalanced, and allied outposts can now be built outside of their province capitals. Battle reinforcement times now always accurate without any leeway. The immortality skill now unlocks automatically at rank 20 for all characters. Demon Prince no longer requires demonic glory to access mortal units, and vassals formed by Selanesh will now never rebel and should always join wars alongside their master, and come with an increase in income. Boris Ursus now receives reduced penalties from Chaos Wasteland climates and generates devotion when holding Chaos Wasteland settlements. The Poison Chaos Warhounds unit will be available in the core game for Kuga. And we've shifted a lot of the potential movement range bonuses from Scarbrand so that they start off a little bit lower and instead build up more over time of the course of the campaign, slowing down Scarbrand's initial rush potential while preserving the ability to pull off massive combos later on. And finally, for those who own Warhammer 1 and 2 and have access to the Immortal Empires campaign, all legacy battle content for the previous two games have been brought across to Warhammer 3, with it being re-implemented, reworked, and rebalanced to fight against the newer races of the trilogy, including reload time calculation adjustments, changes to healing abilities, tweaks to shared spell laws, and adjustments to individual unit stats across all races. A big focus for patch 2.0 is squashing those pesky bugs. Fixes include, but are not limited to, no more crashes for characters with non-standard characters in their names, vassals are now more reliable for the player, and potential attackers will take into account who rules over them. Collision from corpses in battle has also been removed to stop entities getting stuck. Performance boosts in battles when units destroy incidental buildings, that's things like fences, crates and market stalls. And lastly, the defense bonus from formation attack is now shown in the UI. We hope you enjoy these new additions to the game. Read the full changelog for patch 2.0 on August 23rd at TotalWar.com.